On Tuesday, July 22, 2008, the Panther Fire started on the Klamath National Forest in Northern California. On July 23rd, the fire was discovered at an estimated size of 50 acres. Initial attack efforts to contain the fire were unsuccessful. The next day, command of the fire was transferred from an Incident Commander Type 4 to an Incident Commander Type 3 and a trainee. Even with more resources, efforts to contain the fire and establish an anchor point were unsuccessful. The fire had grown to an estimated 170 acres. On Friday, increased fire activity hampered efforts to establish an anchor point once again. It was decided command of the Panther Fire would be transferred to the Siskiyou Complex. On Saturday, July 26th, the fire crept downhill overnight and became established on both sides of the unnamed drainage on the east side of the fire. The Type 2 initial attack crew and the interagency hotshot crew were assigned to start construction of indirect handline on the ridge from drop point 16 to the high knob on the west side of the fire. Two division group supervisors, Division 1 and 2, from the Siskiyou complex were assigned to scout the fire and prepare a strategy for the following day when the transfer of command was to take place. At 10.00 in the morning, Division 1 and 2 arrived at Drop Point 16 and received a briefing from the ICT-3 trainee. At 11.30 during the briefing, the fire activity increased, causing the initial attack and hotshot crews to disengage the fire and return to Drop Point 16. Division 1 and 2 departed from the Drop Point at noon to scout Road 14 and 05. An hour later, the crews re-engaged and went back to constructing indirect handline on the ridge. At 1400, Division 1 and 2 returned to the drop point and left to scout on foot the handline construction. Between 1430 and 1445, a report from the initial attack crew lookout indicated the fire activity was increasing. Around 1,500, Division 1 and 2 were with the hotshot crew in the saddle. The hotshot superintendent informed Division 1 and 2 that the safety zone that was near the high knob on the west side of the fire was about 200 to 300 yards up the ridge. Division 1 and 2 decided to continue west toward the safety zone. A smoke jumper crew and various overhead were already staged at the safety zone. The hotshot crew used their escape route down the north slope of the ridge to road 14 and 05 and then continued all the way back to the drop point. At 1510, Division 1 and 2 progressed up the ridge toward the safety zone. The fire activity continued to increase. Not knowing how much further the safety zone was, Division 2 said, up or down? They both reversed direction and attempted to escape down toward the saddle. They were cut off by fire that crossed the saddle. They reversed direction again, moving back up towards the safety zone. With the fire activity increasing more, Division 1 found a small opening in the brush and said, we need to deploy. Both Division 1 and 2 started to deploy their fire shelters. Division 2 further looked over his surroundings and felt the area was not a suitable deployment site. Division 2 explained to Division 1 that the shelters wouldn't work at that site and that they needed to go down the hill. Division 1 did not respond and continued to deploy his fire shelter. Division 2 balled his shelter under his arm and ran down the hill. After his cross-country escape through heavy downfall, brush, and timber, Division 2 made it to road 14 and 05 at around 1520, where he met the ICT-3 trainee. The trainee contacted Air Attack to conduct water bucket drops to aid in the search and rescue of Division 1. At 1650, the smoke jumper crew located Division 1, deceased, inside his fire shelter. The fire was too hot and the duration of heat was too long for the fire shelter to provide sufficient protection for Division 1.